MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 118. My name is Matt, and this is the weekly podcast discussing everyday tech for everyday people. Have you ever lost an item that was sentimental to you before? Have you ever had something that you've had in the family for years and years and years, maybe accidentally broke it, misplaced it, maybe it got lost in a move or something like that, and you wish you had that sentimental item again? Well, in this week's episode, I'm going to talk about how to use technology to track down rare and vintage items. Now, this week's episode is mostly about a mission that I've been on over the last week or so. It has taken up a lot of free time that I've had this week. And well, you know, while while doing this project, I said I sort of had to dig deep into that bag of tech tricks to try and find something that that I've been looking for recently. Now, I'm going to take a step back, way back to around 2001. Now, during that time, it was probably my first year of college, and I believe it was in the summer, just home from college, and sort of our my my family was going through a rough time. There was a lot of things happening around that time period. And my brother and I were putting together something to sort of cheer everyone up. So just to just for a laugh, just for some giggles or whatever, we decided to all of a sudden go through some of our old Halloween costumes. And we were going to make a ridiculous home movie uh, with a, I believe it was either an eight millimeter or 16 millimeter uh, video camera that the family had owned. And we were just going to uh, make a short video for some laughs. Well, uh, we ended up making this video and it's full of terrible bad acting. One of the things that we, we did was it was completely improvised. We had one camera and it was just the two of us. So we were the two actors. Everything was completely improvised on camera. We did the soundtrack at the same time as we recorded. So we had a stereo playing CDs of music and we'd hit pause and record at the same time as the video camera did so that our, our soundtrack was in sync with, with what we recorded. We had no microphones, no professional gear or anything like this. Completely homemade movie. Most ridiculous thing that you probably ever would see. And for us, when we went back and watched it, of course, it was absolutely hysterical. And uh, we thought it was the greatest thing, even with all the bad acting and uh, nonsense that was in the video. So what we ended up doing is we had two characters that, that were created with our uh, sort of makeshift Halloween costume uh, boxes that we went through. And we found a couple of, of really funny Halloween masks. Now, we ended up making a couple of, of movies with those kind of characters, home movies, just for the fun of it. And eventually we got busy, we got jobs, we moved on. And um, it was a few years ago, so we're talking over 10 years now, uh, that had gone by. We, a few years ago, we wanted to pull out those masks and just sort of reminisce on on what we did back then. Well, it turns out that these masks were um, either lost or, or or kind of even destroyed at some point in time. And they were very sentimental. So over the last few years, we have been trying to track down these masks. Now, the problem is we have no idea when they were made, who they were made by, or what year they were made. So we really had nothing to go by except for a picture from one of these home movies that we made. Okay, so flash forward until about a week ago. Uh, I got a message from my brother, and uh, he took a picture of a couple of masks from a Halloween store that were similar to the ones that we had, but they weren't exactly the ones that we had. And what we wanted, we wanted the ones that we, we had before. So I, I took it upon myself, and he did the same thing, to try to track down these masks at somewhere in the world. And we had no idea where to start. So today's podcast is about tracking down something that you have no idea about, where, where its origins, where its creator, what year, anything like that. But you're trying to track down something that you once had. 
So the first thing that I did is I took this image that I had and I just posted it on social media. And I explained, hey, we're trying to track down these two Halloween masks. They're very sentimental. We've never really been big on Halloween, but we're, we're sentimental about them. If anybody has them, let us know. So just a simple post on social media, because you never know, these masks were mass produced and they could very well be sitting in a box somewhere unused in our general area. And I did this two or three times over the first few days because I know Facebook and I know that when you post something, not everybody that you're friends with will see this. So it's posted a few times over, over a few days. And in the meantime, I took another step and I went on to online yard sales and like swap and trade pages. And here's what I did. I also posted the picture there, basically stating in search of these two masks, if anybody has them, can you let us know? We'll happily pay for them. And so I did this in basically throughout the state that I live in, just to kind of get a wide range of people. Now, the other thing that we were keeping in mind is if we can't track down this, this, these particular masks, can we have an artist duplicate them at a low cost? So then began a, a train of thought of tracking down collectors, experts, enthusiasts of Halloween. Since this is the best time of year to do it, it just happened to be really good timing. So at first, trying to find the right terminology for Google searches was very important. So what we did is, well, I found a few experts. And I just sent them a message on their website. I sort of had a stock email. I included the pictures and really just kind of said, hey, would you have any idea about where to find these items? So this could be um, a, an artist that, that makes Halloween masks, or it could have been just a Halloween enthusiast webpage or that type of thing. And I started doing this website after website after website knowing that in a day or two, I would start hearing back from all of these people. So I sort of got feelers out now, and I've got social media covered a little bit, and I've got the uh, enthusiasts, collectors, and experts involved now. And so, so I know that there is something brewing here. Now, if it, so in this case, Yes, it's ridiculous. We're looking for Halloween masks here. But think about in the case of if you're looking for something that you once had, you could do similar things. Get your social media going, then look for experts, enthusiasts, collectors of whatever it is that you're looking for. So in our case, yeah, it's it's we're looking for ridiculous Halloween masks. But little did we know how rare these masks were. So the next thing that I did, we start looking through eBay. We start looking at all of the different Halloween masks that are for sale on eBay and just scrolling through page after page after page because we didn't know, we kind of had an idea of what the masks were, but we didn't know what the masks were officially called. And that's a big difference. So if you're a collector or if you're trying to sell something, usually you try to get your terminology right. So one of the masks sort of looked like a rat man with big ears and a big nose. And the other one was like a werewolf character with big fangs and pointy ears. And they both had black hair. So we're trying to go through uh, every resource possible. We're trying to check off the list. And we would go through on eBay when we find masks that were similar, but they were not exactly what we were looking for. So what we did on eBay is I would type in a, uh, a, a certain search queue, like werewolf masks. Then we would do like gorilla masks or ape masks or something like that, big ears, big nose mask. And every time we would find something different. And I kept telling myself the whole time that if I could just get one person to be selling this item or one person to know what this item is, then that would lead to uh, a couple of leads and we could track down these items that we're looking for. So we start look. we get away from eBay, we start looking at Etsy and Pinterest, and did the same thing, type of search. So now we're, we're sort of spreading the search to other venues. So we start with eBay, go to Etsy, we go to Pinterest and see what's out there. 
And in the meantime, while I'm doing this, one one time late at night, I realize, you know what? There's there's something that I've forgotten to do. I had an image from one of our old movies. And so we went on to Google and we did a, a reverse image search. So if you go to images.google.com, you can upload an image of whatever it is you want to search for. So we did this with a close-up image of, of our masks. And of course, uh, the only thing that came up was either horror films or um, something similar to that. So reverse Google image, reverse image search, I should say, on Google is a, a revenue for something that you see in real life that you want to search. You can take a picture of it and search it and see what you can come up with. Now, in our case, we didn't have any luck with that, but that was another tool, another key to making progress. So I'm driving to work one day and I start to think about other ways we could get the word out. So we've contacted experts and, and slowly one by one, experts are coming in and saying, wow, those masks are really great. We just don't know where you would find them. We don't have them in stock at our store. We don't have them available. We didn't make these. We don't know anything about them. One by one, we were getting declined, declined, declined. So then it hit me that I haven't searched any Halloween forums yet. So forums are great places for people or enthusiasts or collectors to get together and talk about these things. So we found a forum that was specifically made for Halloween. And I posted our images again. And in this case, this one particular forum, somebody posted a link within 10 minutes of my posting and said, these look an awful lot like a company from 1989. They posted a link to the catalog that these masks were in, or at least one of them, I should say. And sure enough, we click on the link and we go through and it turns out this mask was a special promotional mask from 1989 by a company named Topstone. So Topstone mass produced masks and they were sold throughout the country in 1989. So now we have a brand and we have a year and we have a photo of the original mask back in 1989. That's our, our first lead. So now our search commands expand a little bit more. Now we have a brand and a mask. We still don't know the name of the mask, but we know it's a special promotional mask made in 1989. So now everything that we are, all of the feelers that we put out for the last week really start to come in. And so now I go back to Facebook and the yard sale people that are out there. Uh, some people are interested in the mask. Some people are mask makers. They're giving comments that that they might be able to make the mask, but they need a few more pictures in order to be able to, to make things a little bit uh, more easy for them. So we have a lead on mask makers that could custom make them. I also reached out to mask makers that, that create their own masks, have their own businesses. And it turns out that these professional groups, it costs like $10,000 to replicate a mask. And then another company out there says it costs $6,000 to replicate a mask. Now we're not going to spend anywhere near that, obviously, on, on two ridiculous Halloween masks. But again, they have sentimental value. So we're trying to get them back. So we're looking for Halloween experts. So then I start to learn more about what it is that we're looking for. And believe me, when we started, we knew nothing about any of this. There were just two silly masks that we had that we wanted back. So then we start finding pages and groups on social media for like latex and silicone masks and trading groups because there are lots of collectors out there. There are enthusiasts out there. We just needed to know where they were and how to find them. That was a big part of the process. So then a few nights ago, I was getting ready to fall asleep. And again, I keep scrolling through mask after mask after mask for sale, for trade. And thinking all I need is just one person to have these available. And then that will give us motivation to know that they're still, they still exist. They're still out there somewhere. They've got to be. So just about ready to call it quits for the night. And I have the idea, instead of looking for a single mask, let's look through mask collections. People who have collections of masks out there who have taken pictures of it, maybe we'll see one sitting on a shelf somewhere. So I'm looking through people who are selling bulk masks altogether and scrolling through 
some pages on social media and all of a sudden there's one of them right there, right in the middle of the picture. It exists. It's there. We know one other one of these masks in the world exists and this was sold about a year ago. So that piqued our interest. I couldn't sleep the whole night. We've been working on this for over a week. Couldn't sleep that night. So the next item, I send the guy a message. And actually, I was sending so many messages on social media that uh, my social media pages were telling me, you have to wait an hour before you can send another message because you've sent too many. So I had to stay up even later and I had to wait. And believe me, minute by minute, trying to track this item down, it was rough. We were waiting and waiting and waiting to try to send that message to try to see if that mask ever got sold or if it's still available. And message sent, I try to go to sleep, can't sleep. Immediately wake up the next day, I'm, I'm on social media again, trying to find, now that I know what to search for, because when I made this search, I know what to search for, and now I'm trying to find others of this mask. And it turns out I found another mask, and it was the exact same one. It was brand new. It had the tag still on it, never been used from 1989. And I could see it. It was right there. So close. For five years, we've been looking at this and we've been looking for these masks and we can't find them. But now we know two exist on earth. So now we're sending messages and we're trying to find out what we can do in order to get one of these masks. So I contact the second mask owner and There was a post on social media where the mask was, could have been sold to someone else. So I sent them both messages saying these masks are very sentimental to us. Can we get them? Can we, can we get our hands on one? And it turns out the deal fell through and never, never was sold. And mask number two, that guy ended up selling it to the person who had the first mask that I found. So now I've got a connection. I don't have two masks. I only have one mask. So this mask two, they picked it up at a Goodwill store and they sold it to the person that I first found the mask image of and he posted it for sale. Now, did he sell it? And I'm still waiting to hear back from him. And it was grueling. It was a long wait. This was over, uh, probably over either close to 24 hours or even over 24 hours. I can't recall. It was a long wait to try to hear back. In the meantime, I'm looking for the second mask, which is impossible to find. So we found the one with the big ears and the big nose. Now we're looking for the werewolf mask. And 24 hours later, the guy still has the mask. He's willing to send it to us. And we've made a connection. And I said, how much do you want for it? And he says, send me a few dollars, whatever you want. A few dollars? He's saying he's going to mail this to me for a few dollars? Well, he... This person, I think he was from Illinois somewhere, was willing to mail it the very next day. And so we paid what we thought the mask was worth and then a little bit more than that. So so we have one mask. We finally got one after years of searching. And really, it was from not just one, but many avenues of search. We had collectors sending me messages of of other places to check out or pages to try that I wasn't aware of. We had eBay. Uh, One of the other things I did is I went on listings on eBay and sent them messages through eBay saying, hey, this mask is similar to one we're looking for. Do you happen to have it? And of course, they would all come back. No, we don't have it. No, we don't have it. No, we don't have it. So we finally gotten one. And as of last night, the deal was squared away and it's in the mail on its way and we couldn't be more excited. And so the next thing is to track down the second one. Now, as of this morning, we've got a lead on the second one. We had no idea what the name of that one was. And we kept hearing that it was probably made by this same company, Topstone. But every catalog we looked through, we couldn't find it anywhere. Well, it turns out that in 1982, there was a movie made called The Island of Lost Souls. And there was a character, John Bonomo, who played a beast man character. And so now there's a, uh, we've came across a mask that looks very similar to what we had that was called the Topstone Beast Man mask. And it was 
in 1982 type of era. We haven't confirmed that this is the mask, but our mask had the eyes cut out and this one had like shiny blue eyes. So we are almost certain that it, if it's not this mask, it may be a newer model of this mask. And we came across one on eBay this morning that was selling for $75. We typed in the actual terminology. The only problem is that this mask was preserved. It was filled with a polyurethane to, to keep it protected. And now it's only for display purposes only. So we are making progress on the second mask. But the thing is, these are all vintage. They're rare. We might not come across this. So we're putting feelers out. And if you know of any Halloween experts out there or Halloween enthusiasts or someone with a vast Halloween collection, just take a second and email me mrptechreviews at gmail.com. I'll send you a couple of these pictures. And what we'll do is uh, maybe maybe you have it in your in your costume collection somewhere. Um, anything's possible. If you've been collecting costumes for years or have a costume collection from when you grew up, that might be might be a lead for us. So the avenues, if you're looking for something that is sentimental to you and you're not sure where to start, starting is the hardest part of doing this. And it takes lots of work, lots of effort to try to track these things down. Whatever your item might be, it could be a trinket of some kind. It could be uh, decorations. It could be I don't know, even vintage computers or, or, or things like that. You, know, you might collect old Apple IIs, not sure where to start. And if you're unfamiliar with the company that made it or what year it was made or that type of thing, but you have maybe a picture of it lying around, that is your starting point. You can share that with people who are more experienced with you. I know nothing about Halloween ma manufacturers, but I'm sure there are people out there that, uh, that do. So you got to start. And if you have something sentimental and you'd like it back because it was lost or destroyed or what have you, you probably can find it now. That probably wasn't the case 20 years ago. You, or you could find it, but it took much more effort looking through books and, and, and calling people instead of emailing or sending messages. Social media didn't exist. So I think about, you know, things like when people lose pets and their pets run away or missing persons. It almost is the same thing. Everybody blasts it on social media. Everybody sends emails and all that type of thing. And step by step, you know, in, in some cases, you, you find it. You get it back. And so that's sort of the, the moral of the story here. And yes, it's kind of got a silly story, but it's close to Halloween anyway. So, uh, so thinking it appropriate for, for, for tech. Use all the items to your disposal. Look through Google Images. Do g reverse Google Image searches. Or, or eBay or Etsy or Pinterest, all of those. You could try Google+. Plus. You can try Facebook or Twitter or social networks. Not a lot of people use forums anymore. But forums, I tell you what, that got me the information that I needed. I haven't been to a forum in years. But I happened to find one and people were interested in this topic. And they were more than willing to, to help out. And that got us, number one, the company that it was made from, the year it was made from, and a catalog that it was made from. We're still trying to track down the second one, but we have a lead and that's all that happens. The more that you do this, the more leads you get. There's going to be a whole lot of dead ends. You can't give up. You have to work through it. And that's what I seem to find anytime we have trouble with something. We got to work through it. Got to push through it. Even though it's difficult, make it happen and keep going because yes, 99% of people will have no idea what you're talking about, but then all of a sudden... Somebody will say, I'll keep my eye out, out for it. I'll Let me ask somebody I know and I'll get back to you. Or that looks an awful lot like this. I've seen it, but not in a long time. And those little leads will get you where you want to go. And all of a sudden you'll come across and you'll have a name and a year. And you can post that and people will say, oh, I, I remember this being sold here not too long ago. And you might come across, you might be able to make that track, track that trace of who purchased it and where and to who. And as much as I criticize like Facebook and social media and Google for, for keeping track of everything, in this case, having that post available a year later, still for anybody to see, helped me track down an owner of, of this product and I was able to purchase it from him. 
And so it's all about following leads. It's all about using all the technology you have to your disposal. And uh, we were using mobile devices, searching mobile because we were getting different uh, results on mobile than we would on a laptop. So we're using multiple facets there. And again, just coming up with as many resources as possible, whether it's forums or social media, uh, putting comments in YouTube videos saying, hey, can you contact me and uh, help me out with this? That was a great resource as well. Um, we found experts on YouTube, put a message in the comments saying, we need help. We're looking for this. They got back to me. Um, eBay, Etsy, Pinterest, all of those things all together. And now, instead of searching for two, we're searching for one. We're 50% of the way there. And uh, yeah, tell me about uh, searches you've done in history. What have you done to search for things online? There must be crazier stories than this one. This one sort of had a little Halloween theme to it. But, you know, if you've searched for something out there and you've had to think outside the box and were successful, I'd like to hear your story. Uh, and I could share it on the show, too. It'd be kind of fun to do. So send me an email, mrptechreviews at gmail.com. If you have a Halloween costume collection or if you have a uh, general search idea, ideas for, for searching for things that are sort of outside the box, what do you do? I'd be real curious. And I can uh, maybe update it next week's show as well. That's going to do it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for listening, and we will see you next time.